Now, Paul, we just kind of explored some of this. How big can you make a telescope and how well can you resolve it? So this is looking at all sorts of different Earth observation telescopes that have been launched for the past 60 years. Now, we can see, obviously, not many in the 60s. We weren't launching satellites. We've had quite a lot recently. And they're color-coded based on the type of light they're looking at or what they're looking at in light, mm -hmm. and then how well they can resolve it. So up here, these can resolve on the scale of about a kilometer. Yeah. Now, that's big. Which is fine for measuring your deforestation of the Amazon exactly. or something like that. Not going to be good for picking out you in a crowd, for instance. Yeah. Now, if we want to get to those lower resolution or higher resolution ones, meter or less, there's very few of them, and they operate mostly in types of light, what we call panchromatic. So how about explain these? You've got multispectral, panchromatic, hyperspectral, and thermal. So thermal is working out at um, use 10 microns right. to actually see the glow caused by something that's warm. So exactly. That has the benefit of working at night. Um, it can see through at least smoke. It can't see through clouds, really. But exactly. So, so there is a benefit. But the rest of these are the ones that you kind of generally think of when you're looking at the daytime. And the reason why panchromatic has some of those higher resolutions because they're actually using more wavelengths at once. Okay, so they're basically taking blue, green, red, maybe a bit of near infrared or something, and they're just adding them together with some software to try and get the sharpest image you can. Exactly. So they're essentially they're looking at, hey, if we increase all of the wavelengths, will we actually increase a little bit of the resolution, not artificially, because we're combining more types of light and more information. So you get crisper detail. If you go back, you can actually start to see some structure of the cars here. But I can't tell, is that a red car or a green car? Because I've now lost that color information. I can't tell if it's something red or green. Now, there may be very good reasons, and there are very good reasons for wanting a very clear image, but you don't necessarily care about the color or the wavelength information. Now, multispectral means that we're looking at different colors now. So instead of saying, we're going to shove red, blue, green all in one, we're going to take a red image, we're going to take a green image, and we're going to take a blue image. Which you could then combine to make a color image. Yep. Or you could um, take different colors, maybe more fine colors than the human eye can see. That's and right. we talked about this at great length in exactly. the STARS course, and how um, by dividing the light up into different wavelengths, you could often tell different things. Like you could look at rocks and see what sort of minerals they're made right. of. You might be able to see how healthy uh, some plants are or something like that. So there's always a trade-off. The more finely you divide up the wavelength into different colors, the more you can learn about what's going on, but also you've got less light from each color, so each color is going to be a bit grainier and a bit blurrier. And also, if you're downloading 10 colors rather than just one, you're going to have to take 10 times the download. That's right. And as we're normally limited in how much we can download, that might mean you're only going to download one tenth as many parts of the world. That's right. So you're probably going to look at less, you're going to see a little bit less resolution, but you can see color detail. So, in fact, you can actually make this what we call a false image. So this is the same exact image. Now this is combining the red, green, and blue into what we think our eyes would see. But now we just start assigning different colors. Now why you may want to do this, well now all of a sudden all of this red stuff pops up. Now all this red stuff clearly is trees and grass. Yep. So if you're looking at deforestation or plant growth, this is a way of helping you see that. Whereas you know, you may lose some of that detail in the true color image combining it, but the information's still there. Yeah, so the chlorophyll in trees will absorb and reflect light at particular wavelengths. That's right. And if you have a part of your camera that's tuned to that particular wavelength, you might have a thing that shows healthy chlorophyll that's growing that's, or something right. like this. Um, and likewise, you can have ones that pick out like iron ore and rocks or whatever it might be. And so there's lots of different reasons. And this is kind of then where we get to hyperspectral. Whereas instead of having multi, a few, we just now have hyper or a Lost. lot, yeah. essentially. So as you can even tell, we lose a little bit resolution because now we're looking at very, 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 very fine wavelengths. But we're now going to get a lot more detailed information that can kind of tell us a little bit about what's going on more at the physical level. Yeah, so this is again in the stars, yep. we talked about spectroscopy. This is like taking a spectrum at every point in exactly. your image. Um, and that helps, tells, helps you work out what something's made out of um, at the expense of not knowing where it is and exactly what shape it is so well. That's right, so at least it's telling you there is a composition of this type of mineral uh, or this resource for instance, or this amount of water, salt water or normal water uh, here. You may not be able to pinpoint it, so what often happens is you will say, hey, all right, I have my resolution image. I really want to know is that 
iron ore or is that, you know, some other type of dirt? I'll go and take an image in my hyperspectral and be able to pinpoint it. So most of these, just like in astronomy, work together to get you your information.